Hello, everyone, and welcome to our second in our Software Testing World Cup winners interviews. So this is the Team Africa, the Open Box Software, who won out of 40 or so teams that competed in Africa, and they're going to the Worlds in Boston, Germany, in November. Uh, hello, everybody. Hello. How's it going? So we've got uh, who do we have? Ryan Hill, Andrew Thompson, Corinne Eaton, and Delicia Oliver. Is it is it Karen or Corinne? It's Karen. Karen. Okay. And you're in Cape Town, South Africa. If you haven't seen the video they made, they made a wonderful little two-minute video of. Mostly the, the lay of the land there. It's beautiful. I've got, I, I have to find some excuse to visit uh, South Africa now, including them playing with, is it, is, it, it's, is it a tiger you're playing with in the video? Uh, uh, that, that was a cheetah. Right, because cheetahs are, are so much safer than tigers. <laughs> So um, who's the, I think I think Ryan's the, the team lead or project manager is that right? Your team? Uh, yeah, that's right. So I'm I'm currently ac uh, operating as a project manager at Openbox Software. Um, I mean, I joined the company about five years ago as a tester or a quality assurance analyst, um, and since about two years ago, I've more been focusing on the project management side, um, and it just felt natural when we, when we got together as a team um, that I, I wouldn't really call myself a a leader, but because we all have our defined roles and responsibilities, um, but yeah, I kind of keep the team together. I think and coordinates everything between us. Sure. So how did you actually how did you actually play it? So we have three hours. Here's some software. Go test it. What did you? How did you split up the work? Yeah. Um, well, initially we made sure that we just wanted to. Um, spread things out as much as possible. So we gave everyone uh, defined roles. Ryan being, as we said, the coordinator, he monitored the YouTube stream and kept uh, us up to date with everything that um, the clients were saying. Um, so that allowed uh, the rest of us to actually focus on functional testing and exploring the system without the distractions of the YouTube stream. Um, yeah. Great, thanks. And um, that was Andrew, right? Andrew Thompson speaking. So can you yes, tell, me, tell, me, tell me, Andrew, um, what was your favorite bug that you found? What was the most interesting little piece of functionality? It might not even be a bug. It might just be something you weren't expecting. Um, I guess during the, the competition, um, I was looking at the section where we were, or where the clients would use it to include new um, employees and going through the whole CV interview process and things like that. Um, and there were various things um, where maybe the validation or the verification wasn't quite right, so I was able to upload an image to the video section and things like that. Um, yeah, so I guess I, I enjoyed finding things where if the user perhaps made a mistake, uh, there should have been something which informed them in a more user-friendly way what had, what had actually gone wrong. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, um, do you want to tell us a little bit about the application you were testing, Karen? Well, it was a um, content management system with uh, invoices and uh, user profiles, and um, it was quite interesting. It was quite quite difficult to get into at first, so we opted for the help manual, which also wasn't too helpful. <laughs> um, <coughs> But it was quite a big system. I think that that was quite interesting. I don't think we were expecting such a huge system to be um, testing for such a limited period of time. Um, but yeah, I, I focused on a sort of the invoices and that sort of thing. So I didn't get to dive into much of it. But yeah, it, it became clear through chatting with the clients as well, which is quite useful. What areas they to focus on, um, and that allowed us to narrow our focus onto the areas that they would actually find valuable in our test report. Um, but as Karen said, it was quite a big system, so it, at the start it was quite daunting, um, especially since we also had a 
we experienced quite a lot of system instability in the beginning. Um, there was a denial of service attacks and things going on in the server, which um, I'm sure you're aware of, and the organizers and the, the clients themselves have tried to not, uh, well, tried to explain and kind of request everyone not to do that, but it still unfortunately went ahead. But fortunately, everyone would be in the same boat, so we didn't feel disadvantaged or anything. It just meant we had less time to test. Yep, yep. And so we were absolutely trying to simulate conditions of uncertainty, ambiguity, not enough time. Um, maybe, it, you know, instability was, um, maybe you could argue that wasn't fair, but like you said, it was consistent for everyone, just like a real software product where all of a sudden someone steps on the server and the server goes down or um, somebody needs to do a hot fix so you can't test in the test server anymore because they're putting the old build patch on it while you're trying to test the new one. All that, I'm trying to remember. So South Africa was Highland Software, is that right? Is that uh, what you guys were testing? The workflow stuff? That's, that's yeah. correct. I think it was the probe system or something, yeah. Yeah, there, there's so much because we had to do six different continents in about two months and we had to go find software under test and we tried to make it different every time. I think we succeeded at that so that you know, if someone did a long blog post about all the tricks they found with Highland, then the next the next continent would have to deal with something else, and it would be fair. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was it was a bit much for the judges too. So um, Delicia, did did you have is it am I pronouncing that right? Is it Delicia? Delicia. Yeah. Delicia. Delicia. Okay. Um, did, did you have fun? Was it was it was it exciting? And how did you manage your time? Um, uh, I won't lie to you. Before, like a week before the time, or even two weeks, it was very overwhelming. The nerves got the better of us, I think, or well, at least the better of us. <laughs> <laughs> but like, in going into the competition, we had a plan, but we were unsure of what we we're going to test. So it was still that uncertainty. But we made sure that we were going to have fun. We, we had our leader who was, was I listening to the YouTube, giving us instructions. So we worked well together as a team, I would say, because as soon as we found out what sections was important to the client, we split that up among the three of us. Ryan was busy populating the, the fields in the document, getting everything ready for before cutoff times that we had that day as well. So we had fun. It was interesting. And the best part was we don't work on one team at our company. So working together was also a new experience for us. But all in all, it was fun. It was really, uh, and to find out that we won was really the cherry on top because, yeah, we just gave it our best and we were hoping for the best and to find out we won. Was, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's great. And, and I, I, think in, um, I think in testing in general, in many companies, there's way too much of, we have five testers. Sometimes we only have one, and we're all on five different projects, and we never really talk about what we're doing, and there's not the opportunity for learning. You have to kind of create those opportunities. And if the test competition was uh, was one of those opportunities for you guys, then I'm really pleased. And you're getting an all expense paid. Well, not all expense. But I don't think we pick up all the food. I don't think we pick up all the food, but the hotel, airfare, and about half or three quarters of the meals. I don't think you know people are complaining. Um, Expense covered uh, vacation to, to Germany, and there's some competition or something too. But uh, um, I hope you really take advantage of, of the time that you have in, in Berlin and Potsdam, because it's beautiful out there too. Are you planning? Have you have you have you given any thought to what you're going to do when you're out there, or are you focused on the competition? Um, yeah, I have, well, personally, I've actually taken some extra leave after the fact, so. On top of the travel leave that Openbox is giving us, I'm taking some personal time, and I'm going to travel around Germany. Um, I haven't come up with a solid itinerary yet, but I'm probably going to get one of those uh, seven-day train passes mm. and just see where the, where the road takes me, as it were. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, but not to take away from the focus that will be put on the competition, of course, and the conference. I'm um, looking forward to that and learning some new things about the agile testing world and attending such a such a prestigious international uh, conference for me that I, uh, should be good. Yeah, I, I think it's fair to say that if you want to go to an Agile test conference in Europe, um, Agile testing days is it. Uh, there's, there's a couple of good test conferences in Europe, but if you want the, the Agile feel, 
uh, matching testing days at the top of the list. I went in 20, uh, 2012 and 2013. I'm really pleased to be coming back this year. Um, I think the program is out. Have you, have you looked at any specific uh, classes or sessions that you want to attend? Yeah. Um, what, what we noticed is that the, the Monday prior to the actual conference starting Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday was when all the tutorial sessions are also happening. Um, and we noticed that you actually, for instance, are doing a half-day tutorial. So we signed up for that one. Just oh, for fantastic. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, Wednesday, Wednesday uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, rather, uh, we did have a brief look at some of the, the speakers, and they, they all seem really relevant. So we, we've yet to decide if we're going to split up, if there are multiple tracks going on, or, or what we're going to focus on. But we'll, we'll definitely decide that before the time. Yeah, the hardest part that I have with conferences, and this is just in general, is that you get super, super excited, right? And then you come home and you say, we need to boil the ocean, we need to reinvent everything we're doing here, we need to change everything. But don't, but it's going to be an investment, so we're not going to, we're just going to learn. For the, we're going to be experimenting for, I want to set the expectations, we're not going to you know, do anything different, really, for a couple of weeks, we're not going to get any velocity. And then we have to buy this tool from a vendor, and we should need to hire some consultants, and we need, we need to go to training, you know, and the, the director of software engineering says, ah, I just lost you for a week. I, I got no productivity for a week. I want value now. I don't want more spending. Um, so I always encourage people that... that um, on that plane flight home, think about three things you can do without anyone else's permission that you learned at the conference that you can do immediately to add value so that when the conversation comes about can we go next year, the answer is, well, of course, yes. When the project winds down and someone says, why was that successful, we pull out our list and we say, well, these are the four things we learned at the conference which we just did to add a lot of value. So um, I don't know if you guys go to a lot of conferences. I think there's a couple in South Africa. There's a pretty good lean conference in South Africa, I think. But um, um, I would encourage you when you think about sessions to attend, am, is this session going to solve my problem at work? What are my problems at work? Sometimes the most valuable experience with the conference is these are the four problems I'm trying to solve at work, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang out in the, the hallway with this new person, interesting person I met who has a solution might be more valuable than I'm going to go to the keynote, which might or might not be relevant to me. I'm going to, you know, I have to pick one of these four, which might or might not be relevant. It's amazing the, the, what you can get out of the sessions. Um, final question, and I guess I'll, um, I'll, I'll aim this one at Karen because you've been quiet. Uh, are, you, are you doing anything special to prepare, to prepare for the worlds? Um, yes. We don't really want to give too much away. Everybody but, um, says that. <laughs> Everybody says that. <laughs> well, strategic strategy. Um, <laughs> we will be preparing a little bit beforehand. Uh, we are looking up a few things that could help us while we're there. Um, and I think mental preparation is probably the biggest the biggest thing. It's 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 scary. It's exciting. We're we're nervous. We're going to a whole new country. We've got to take all our stuff with us. So. There's a lot of things we need to sort out beforehand, but I think possibly two weeks before or three weeks before, we, we're going to give it um, some serious thought and start strategizing as a team what we're going to do and um, what our, our plan of attack is. We're, we're going to sort of keep to what we what we know and what worked well in the prelims. Um, again, don't want to give away too much, <laughs> but um, if, if anything, uh, communication is key, so we've learned that Obviously, that's that's one of our biggest advantages, and um, we'll take that with us. But um, yeah, we don't want to give too much away. Um, <laughs> All right, then I'll, I'll give you I'll give you a couple of um, couple of hints if you want them. I think which might be good to the audience, and um, I'll make a deal with you. So, <clears throat> the first thing is that there um, the weekend before I think it's the Sunday before the worlds. We're going to be doing uh, Quest Lightning, which is a peer conference. So anybody that's attending Agile Testing Days can come Sunday before uh, before Agile Testing Days and compete to represent Antarctica. 
and we will probably be doing a very similar uh, style as the actual world competition. The judges are, um, we're all getting to know each other in person because we've only mostly collaborated over the web. So it'll be a little bit uh, learning experience for the judges. But uh, you guys don't have any pressure on Sunday. You've already earned your slot. So you could come to that and observe what the other teams do. You can take notes if you want. And uh, anybody, anybody watching, of course, you can come and try to earn your Antarctica slot if, you, if you're in Germany. Um, it's November 9th, I think. You're welcome to, and I don't think there's a fee for that. So even if you're not going to the competition, if you're in Europe, you could, you could go, you could go to the Pass Lightning to try to earn the Antarctica prize. But um, then for the worlds, we're probably going to be in one big room. Every team is probably going to have a table. There's going to be seven teams represented, so it might get noisy. So you might want to think about how you're going to collaborate if there's a lot of background noise. Might be something to think about. And uh, final thing is that if you guys want to be a little tight-lipped about your strategy, that's fine. Would you be opening to doing this again after the world is over and sort of sharing your, your learnings with the world? Because I think people want to hear it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Well, well, on that note, uh, thanks a lot. And I'll be seeing you in Germany in uh, a couple of months now. It's getting, it's getting close. Mm. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Thanks, thanks, Matt, very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you very much. Looking forward to it. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Have a good day. Cheers, man. Cheers. Bye.